new tires for the caddy and I'm going to show you guys how to dismount tires by hand um, this is a bead breaker you can buy them like Harbor Freight this is a bead breaker my grandpa built uh, long before I was ever born um, probably even thought of and he was a he was a millwright and a genius he, uh, we died uh, we lost him last year um, last November he died of Parkinson's um, but some of his stuff still lives on and is used to this day, um, including this shop he built um, when he was younger than me. But anyways, the, uh, I'm going to show you guys how to do this. He taught me how, and I kind of perfected the art. Um, and I can do this just about as fast as somebody working at an average pace on a tire machine, um, as long as the bead breaks down. But I'm going to see if I can't set this down here so you can watch. you don't want to do is when you go to spin this, just because you push this bead down right here doesn't mean you want to stick your fingers in there and pick it up. Because I did that one time, you learned once that um, that bead will pop back up on sometimes and it will catch your fingers in there. Not pleasant. flat bar to get it started, put the tire down, like that, so you can see it a little better, and this trailer hitch to fit on the Cadillac. The wife and I are going to take a trip up north. You'll probably see some of it on video here. Oh, probably around Thanksgiving, Christmas time. But um, in September we're going up uh, do some 66 and up through Wisconsin and up into the UP and we're going to stay at a cabin up there. Well, we're up there, we're going to ride four-wheelers. And we're going to take the four-wheelers with us. That means we need to tow them, and we're going to use the Cadillac, because we're better to tow with than 472 cubic inches. So I have this old hitch. It came off of a, it wasn't a Delta 88, um, then it was modified and cut off, and we had put it on the back of our trailer to haul with. Yeah, it's a flat towing a Volkswagen Beetle behind an open trailer behind a half-ton pickup. Lead foot. So what I'm going to do to modify it to fit the Caddy, is there's one hole in the center of the bumper right at the back and there's really no edge for this to bolt to. Um, and I don't want to weld anything to the bumper and ruin the chrome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a filler piece to go across here, weld it here, here, and here, put one hole in it to bolt right there at the back. 
and then there is a cross member that I'm going to bolt this to. I'm going to add some back to this, leave it, and weld some on on there. And I don't know if you can see it or not. But, um, I'm going to cut this plate, fit it in there, add on to this, and tie this into the frame somewhere to give it a little more strength. But there we go. Make some noise. Alright, got the hole marked. It's not really going to lay out like I thought it would. The V of the bumper comes too far out here. And if I put it with the hole right here, the bumper comes out, and I'd never be able to get the receiver down over the, the ball because the bumper angles out like that. So I had to move it back about like that so the bumper comes right in here. And I'm from my hole towards the back. And this isn't going to fall on the cross member, but it falls in real nice right in front of it. It actually sits up higher, which is good because the car sits on the ground. Um, so what I'm going to do is mount this here, and then I think from here I'll just kind of angle backwards, catch the cross member, then go out and tie to the frame. Um, but for what little weight I'm going to haul, it's just a small uh, two-place snowmobile trailer with two quads on it. Um, so it's probably you know 200 pounds of tongue weight which is what the max is on this hitch anyways um, and it's probably going to pull it you know 1800 pounds or something the trailer I think weighs seven so um, yeah I'm going to pull punch or center punch this and if you don't ever have a you know if you don't have a center punch uh, take an old um, this is a push rod out of a Volkswagen Beetle for the fuel pump and I grind it onto a point and it's hardened steel so it'll last um, and just like that, you get yourself a center punch. But any hardened steel, like a fuel pump push rod, or a push rod wouldn't work unless they're solid, um, for as far as like a valve push rod. But I'm going to draw this hole out. Here's a little trick I was drilling the hitch, and this drill bit is about shot. So I'm going to sharpen it, show you guys how to sharpen drill bits. It's going to be kind of hard to show how on just the camera here, but what you want to do is take your 
drill bit and the ang this angle right here you want to hold it against that but you also want to hold down when you're doing it so you want to bring it up against till it puts a nice edge right along here and then bring it down because you want this to be le your leading edge you don't want it to have this part sitting on the steel that needs to be able to clear the steel so let's see if I can show you here See how well it cuts. much better. Alright, I got the uh, one hole drilled and the nut, bolt nut in there. Um, you can see how close the hitch is what I was talking about getting my receiver or my tongue over that uh, with my trailer. It had to be back a little further and there's no edge to this bumper here that these bolt holes would have worked on and then there's that cross member what I'm going to do is I got a piece of angle iron back there I'll show you in a second then I'm going to put on the back side of this weld it to this and then I can drill up through three spots and bolt that and that'll give me my tongue weight mounting point you know for the tongue weight itself and then I'm just going to take these pieces of thick, ball, thick wall tubing and I cut them off a bit of an angle. Um, and it's going to go like that and it's an angle forward and meet up with one of them holes in the frame. And I'm going to bolt it out there uh, through the tubing. Uh, so, what I got here is This piece of angle iron that I cut uh, this chunk off of. This is three inch angle, and I marked it along the back side of the hitch, and it's going to go on the back side of the hitch like this, up against the frame, and then it's going to weld along where I ground that right there. And then I marked it there, one up a little further because the cross member kind of V's. So put the other one there. I'm going to put like 7 16 holes in it. Probably use like either 7 16 bolts or grade 8, you know, grade 8 whatever, but either 3 8 or 7 16 whatever I got room for on that cross member because I think the cross member would be a little narrow to put 7 16 in to leave any meat. So I'm going to go ahead and drill this.
just going to take this half inch drill bit like I did before. Got that piece all clamped underneath there. Holes all lined up. And I'll just drill up through the frame. But I'm gonna go ahead and weld this. Okay, got some, uh, got that angle iron welded in there, and I got these pieces made up with bolts going through it up into the frame here with um, like a big washer to fill in the big hole, and then I put one of the, like a square plate that comes with the trailer hitch. I had some left over, um, real thick, like 3 8 steel. Um, stuck that up in on top of it to kind of reinforce it. Um, now some will say you don't want to drill through it tube like that and because it'll, you know, it'll crush it but this is thick wall and then if you look in there it's it, it barely has any room on either side of it so I'm not worried about it and you know if it was load bearing I probably would but all this is doing this is just side to side support for the hitch so it's more in shear than it is um, in compression or whatever you want to say um, so it'll be fine the way it is for what and for what I'm doing with it. I'm not pulling a house trigger with it. So I'm gonna weld up these right here, and here, and then I just gotta drill them holes from the bottom. But I'm gonna do that tonight when I go to my buddy's shop and just put it on his lift because I got new tires for this. So just be easier then. And I know I didn't weld on the top, but I'll pull it all back off, weld it, and then paint it. So, but it's mostly welded on the vehicle. I'm going to tighten the bolts up because I only put them on there pretty tight for right now.
You might ask, why are you laying on a piece of cardboard outside of your garage and you have all that shop space? Well, that doesn't run, and that doesn't run. took the carburetor apart on this so that I can get the jets out of it to get some bigger jets for it because it needs to be jetted up and this as you know we're working on so it's not running yet but there's a spot there that's taken up but I just didn't feel like letting this out of the jacks pushing it out just to back that in for something I didn't initially plan on doing anyways it just kind of started falling together so I did it but there's the hitch on the caddy. Alright, I figured I'd do a video on this car since I'm working on the hitch. I know uh, we posted up pictures of it, but um, never really said a whole lot about it. Um, it is a 1970 uh, Cadillac, obviously, Sedan DeVille, and it was a project that a friend of a friend started. building. We're in a really nice back shop, still does, and he's moving to a bigger building. And it was a case of the cobbler's shoes, um, meaning it was his own and he didn't have the time for it. So he ended up getting rid of it, uh, but wanted to get rid of it, and he texted a buddy of mine and said, hey, come and get the caddy if you want it, you can have it. Well, my buddy didn't have a place for it. He already had two projects in his garage, so the first person he thought of was us. I would take it probably no matter what. And my buddy Jared texted me and said, hey, uh, TJ's selling his caddy, or getting rid of his caddy, and you can essentially have it, just come and get it. So, being the car hoarder that I am, I immediately got a hold of TJ and said I will be there. And he said, well, I can't do it today. I mean, I was already letting him leave that that afternoon when I found out I had kind of a free day at the shop and I was like I can drive. It was in O'Leary, Ohio. We're in Toledo. It's about an hour and 40 minute, 45 minute drive. Um, and we, we were going to go get it that day. Well, he wasn't able to do it. He was going to do whatever, but he said Saturday. And I didn't want to lose the deal. And so we drove out there the following Saturday morning and got there. And the car was in million pieces and he told me to bring an army and I didn't. I brought myself, my wife, and my two dogs, which the two dogs are worthless. Um, the wife was helpful, but I pretty much conquered the whole thing getting it. The, when I got there, the body was sitting on jack stands and the frame was laying on the ground underneath it. The one front suspension knuckle was all torn apart. The engine was still in it. Trans, drive shaft, rear end was still in it. The interior was gutted. The rear frame rails were cut off just over the axle. The bumpers were off of it. I mean, this thing was gutted. Every piece of this car was out of it. There was the only thing was in it was this the headliner, but all everything gone, including the rear speaker tray was cut out of it, and the over the axle hump was cut out of it. So I had to load the entire contents of a 1970 Cadillac Sedan DeVille up into itself and into my half-ton pickup to get it home. Now, when you take one of these cars apart, they, I mean, they take up three garage spaces. So, we loaded up, you know, everything the how we could. The car was full of itself. I stacked the front end kind of back on it. Uh, going back to it sitting on the ground, I jacked up the frame to the body, got it, Got to, and then pick the body up off the jack stands with the, you know, picking the frame up. Put the jacks in under the frame, jack the back of the frame up, etc. Got it all up so the whole thing was sitting together on jack stands. Set it back down, um, put the right front knuckle back together, put some blocks in where the springs would be because this thing laid on the ground. It's an inch and a half body drop and it had no springs in it. So it laid on the ground. I need to get it up at least six inches so that I can get it on the trailer. So I, I brought wood blocks knowing this, blocked it all up, 
got it so they would roll, and another, TJ had another guy working there at the shop, kind of getting vehicles out of the way because it was really buried in the corner. So I got it all ready to roll. We pushed the vehicles around. I backed my trailer right up to the door, and I put the rear on the roller dollies. We kind of maneuvered it around. This thing is almost 19 feet long. And we're maneuvering around inside this building. There was like five other cars in there. Got it around to the door, mounted right up on the trailer, and up off the dollies and onto the trailer it went. And then he said that the rest of the car was at his house, meaning the interior, the hood, the dash, you know, everything else. And so we went over to his house, loaded all that stuff up, and the car at this time was already full of itself. So we piled the back of my Silverado, which is just a short bed, it's got a toolbox in it, so that screws the bed right there. But there wasn't much room for all of it. Got it all loaded up and strapped down and then made the journey home. Uh, and like I said, I got this car for free. He just wanted it gone, but he wanted to see somebody do something with it. And, you know, talking to Jared and everything, he knew that, you know, I would do something with it, which I did. Um, and the wife immediately fell in love with it. Because I was ready to just kind of get it, to flip it, to sell it, you know, build it, sell it, because that wouldn't have a whole lot in it. Um, and through a matter of trading, through Jared, um, I did some wheel bearing job for him on his, one of his cars, and he gave me a bunch of air ride stuff, a compressor, four bags, a bunch of cup mounts and stuff. So, at this point, I bought a, I bought a parts car. I bought a 70 Coupe de Ville, because I needed a lot of the dash pieces, I think TJ was going to do like vintage air or something on it, so all the AC stuff was gone. The compressor was still on it, and the condenser was in it, but everything else was gone. So I needed all that stuff, and I wanted to return the car to stock, I kind of went a different way than he did, but I wanted the car to be totally stock when he looked at it, but being body dropped that it would lay on the rocker panels. So, I uh, bought this parts car for 600 bucks, I think it was 650 somewhere in there. It cost about another, you know, 50 bucks to go get it. It was in Mansfield, about two hours away. Um, and it was rotten. I mean, it was good for parts. I still have the car. We're trying to sell it. But I sold the engine out of it. Um, I think there's actually a picture of it on the Leadfoot Customs page, uh, Instagram page. Uh, it's pretty rough. So if you're looking at trinkets, I got some. It's, that's really all that's left. Most of your tears gutted. Sold the engine for 500 bucks sold the trim off the side for 80 and some other odds and stuff that I can't exactly recall for, you know, they're a few hundred dollars. So I made my money back on the parts car and I still have it, so it doesn't owe me anything. So at this point, if you subtract labor, I have nothing into this car. Not a dime. Um, I had to buy a couple of odds and things, but I've sold stuff off the other one and traded and, and you know, whatever. And I really... And right now we're going to get tires. I bought some tires for it. 260 bucks for just some classic white walls. Um, not old school, you know, not um, bias plies or cokers or anything. Just $260 worth of what your grandma would put on her LTD station wagon. Um, that's what we're putting on it for right now until I get Supremes and then I'll figure out what I'm going to do from there. But that's what I like to do is put Supremes on it. But right now we're rocking the uh, stock steel wheels with hubcaps. Um, got one compressor on it, four solenoids, um, rocking, you know, or no, six solenoids, excuse me, two for the right front, two for the left front, and the rear is T. Um, I can really care less to hit sides and do all that crap up and down is all I want to do. And I have, you'll see I have four switches, um, the ones for the ear horn, which is not hooked up yet. But this car doesn't owe me anything. I don't have anything into it. The wife, like I said, laid claim to it. She loves it. Um, and you can find her on Sweet Baby Cadillacs on Instagram. Um, so this is essentially her car. If I tell people about this car and I use the words my car or my Cadillac, my wife will immediately correct me and really let everybody know whose it is. Um, but she loves it, drives it everywhere. It drives beautifully. It drives, well, it drives all right right now. The tires that are on it are the ones off the coupe, and they sat forever. They're flat spotted. They're like brand new Michelins. Bunch of tread on them. They look perfect. 
on the outside. The insides look horribly dry rotted. I mean, horribly dry rotted. And that's why I got new tires. We're going to Cincinnati this weekend for some graduation parties, and um, I wanted to have new tires on it because I don't want to be blowing tires up, ripping skirts off, 